What's up YouTube, this is Alex Rose, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I was talking to some of my friends uh, who are you know, starting up DJing, getting into DJing, and they said that they would like to know some uh, basic music theory on how to DJ. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Today we're gonna to start off with part one, which is rhythm, and next week we're gonna move on to part two, which is tone. So let's jump right into the video right after the intro. So like I said, the first major fundamental component to DJing is rhythm. And we're going to break down rhythm into all of its component parts. So the first part is the beat. The beat uh, is a pulse felt in a song and is one of the two standard units of measurement used in music. Think of a beat like a foot, as in 12 inches. A beat can be subdivided into halves and quarters and so on, just like a foot can be. It's usually easiest and cleanest to place rhythmic elements on exact subdivisions of the beat. However, breaking that guideline isn't necessarily bad. In dance music, we tend to put important percussive elements on the beat so that they reinforce the pulse of the song. For instance, in house music, almost every beat is accompanied by a kick drum. The offbeat, which lies exactly halfway between beats, can also be used to emphasize the pulse. In house music, open hi-hats are put on the offbeat. A disclaimer though, the offbeat is not the same as offbeat. The offbeat is a technical term for the halfway point between two beats, whereas offbeat refers to when two elements have conflicting or mismatched pulse locations. So in summary, a beat is a standard unit of musical time. Beats usually coincide with the pulses in a song. There's also a difference between the offbeat and offbeat. The offbeat is halfway between beats. Offbeat is when two sets of beats don't share the same pulses. Next up is tempo, or BPM. Tempo refers to the frequency of beats, usually measured as beats per minute or BPM for short. Since the number of beats in a minute is not an exact multiple of 60, at least not usually, we discuss musical lengths using beats and bars, not seconds and minutes. Another important component of BPM is the time of the tempo. In this context, time refers to the amount of beats that are actually felt as pulses. Take the early example of house music. Since each beat receives a kick drum, each beat is felt as a pulse, so the tempo of house music, typically 120 to 132 BPM, is felt at full time. Dubstep, by contrast, which is usually around 140 to 150 BPM, is felt at half time. This is because dubstep does not place a major percussive element on every beat. Therefore, despite being a higher BPM than house, Dubstep can feel slower, since the pulses are only placed on half of the beats. This is why your DJing software might tag dubstep at 70 to 75 BPM instead of 140 to 150. Almost no dance music engages in double time when there are pulses felt on the offbeat. Tempo is important in DJing, as two songs playing at different BPMs will not mix. BPMs of the two tracks either have to be the same or shifted to the same during the transition in order to mix. Increasing tempo also usually causes a rise in the energy of a mix, which is why hip hop clubs often start at 85 BPM and end the night at 150 to 165, slowly moving up the tempo throughout the night. So in summary, tempo refers to beats per minute or BPM. In dance music, Tempo is usually full time, meaning that every beat has a pulse, or half time, meaning that only half the beats have pulses. Finally, tempo is fundamental to mixing properly and can help you raise the energy throughout a show. Next up is a measure or a bar. A measure, commonly referred to as a bar, is the next standard unit of measurement in music. In dance music, a bar consists of four beats. This is because the time signature used in most dance music is 4-4, so we're not going to go into time signatures. 
Bars are divided into the beats one, two, three, and four. Sound familiar? If you've heard some advanced producers or DJs discuss house music, they probably refer to the clap being on the two and four, while the kick is four to the floor. This means that on the second and fourth beats of the bar, there is a clap, and that there is a kick on all four beats of the bar. In dubstep, the kick is on the one and the snare is on the three. While the two and the four might have hi-hats and other percussion, they aren't emphasized and therefore aren't felt as pulses like we discussed earlier. It's important in mixing that you not only have your two tracks playing on beat, but also on bar. The one, two, three, and four of both songs should line up. You can usually determine which beat is the one by identifying the start of a new phrase which we'll discuss next. In summary, a bar consists of four consecutive beats, labeled one, two, three, four. The percussive elements of your genre probably have standard placements within the bar, so learn them. Finally, it's important to not only have your track on beat with each other, but also on bar. Next up, phrases and sections. Phrases are musical ideas that typically repeat, sometimes simply called loops, by dance music producers. Phrases consist of four bars. Phrases can have as many or as little elements as they need, depending on the section of the song, but they usually contain an entire idea to be repeated, altered, and developed throughout a section. A section is the largest measurement of a song. Unlike the previous measurements, sections can vary in length, ranging from eight to 32 bars. Sections repeat phrases, adding variation, new elements, automation, and so on. They typically require a lot of transition effects and are obviously delineated. Examples of sections include intros, breaks or verses, buildups or climaxes, drops or choruses, and outros. Like with beats and bars, your track should be in phrase. However, they don't need to always be at the same point in a section as the same section of two different songs can have different lengths. As a rule of thumb, either the beginnings or ends of your track's mixed sections should line up. I'll give you two examples. Let's say our first track has a 16 bar outro and our second track has an eight bar intro. If we start the intro when the outro begins, we have to be mixed completely out of the first track within that eight bars even though the outro of the first track is 16 bars. In another case, let's say you want to switch from the buildup of a first track to the drop of a second track. Just make sure that the one beat of the first bar of the first phrase of the drop of both songs are lined up. Then it won't matter if they have different length buildups. Keep in mind you don't need to play corresponding sections with one another. You can layer the break of one song on the drop of another. It typically helps if both uh, sections are the same amount of bars, however they must be in the same key for this kind of layering. More on that next week. So summary of that. Phrases are isolated musical ideas or loops. They are usually four bars long and don't add any major elements in their duration. A section consists of 8 to 32 bars and develop phrases. Sections are the largest discernible parts of a song, like intros, verses, and drops. You want to be in phrase while mixing, but you have more freedom when it comes to sections. So that wraps it up for the rhythm fundamental for DJing. Next week we'll explore the other major fundamental of DJing, tone. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video so that more people can find it, and follow me on social media at Alex Rose Official. Also, we're nearly at a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. If you know someone who'd like the channel, please share this video with them directly. Your support means a lot to me. Happy dancing.